Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is News and Week in Review, where we're going to go through a variety of news pieces within the board game space. We'll talk about the games I played, the topic of the week, we don't actually have a topic of the week this week, as well as all of the videos that we did this week. And we're going to dive into news starting off first, but before we do, we actually have a sponsor of the week this week. Specifically, we have Fromage from R2i Games. Fromage is currently on Kickstarter, you can check that out, I'll have a link to it down below, please check that out to make sure that they know I sent you. But Fromage is going to be a worker placement game, where players are placing their workers out onto the board to place and build various cheese and various uh, sectors on the board. You're going to be dealing with a rondelle, a board that's turning around as you place your workers, the board rotating slowly but surely as one to four players play in a simultaneous action game which they're going to be placing their workers in different areas to try to score as efficiently as possible. You're going to be trying to optimize your placement in each of four different regions while being mindful of when and how your workers come back to you. Workers come back on either one, two, or three turns from now, forcing you to examine the value of every single worker as you place it. I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. Please go ahead and check that one out. That's Fromage from R2i Games. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the news, starting off with Volition shutting down by Embracer after a Saints Row disappointment. That's the title over here. But basically, Volition Games, which is a, uh, board, a video game company that's been around for like 30 years, they are shutting down. And if you're like Alex, that's not board game news. It's not, except it's tangentially related because Embracer Group is the same company that bought out Asmodee. Embracer is the investment company that has a variety of holdings to its name. Uh, they reported, we talked about this, I don't know, six months ago, they reported some degree of losses and restructuring, and Volition is one of the companies that's being restructured. So, only tangentially related, but just interesting to be mindful of other areas of, of Embraces holdings that are being shut down. That's the only real reason to talk about over here. Then we have over here, we have Wondrous Creatures. Wondrous Creatures is going to be the newest game coming to you from Bad Comic Games. I don't have a ton of information on this game just yet. All I know is it looks pretty cool. Bad Comic Games, they've had a bunch of games that the most recent one, I still need to, I still need to play it. I can't remember the name of it offhand. I still, something, uh, Life of the Amazonia, Tales of the Amazonia, I don't remember what it was, but either way, I want to go ahead and give that one a shot when I can, but this is the newest one coming out soon, Wondrous Creatures, looks great, their re most recent games have all had a very particular vibe to them, and I'm digging the vibe, I'm just curious whether I'll be digging the games. Then we have Orange Nebula, they announced a new series over on their YouTube channel, that's going to be Spirit Fire, the docuseries series. That's the docuseries trailer. That's what it is. But Spiritfire, they're a very hyped game that has been in the works for quite some time. They've made Vindication. I love Vindication. They've made Unsettled. I love Unsettled. They've made making Spiritfire, and I haven't played Spiritfire, so I don't really have anything other than general excitement to have, and excitement that manifests in the name of having a Spiritfire docuseries trailer over here. Then we have over here, we have over on GameFound, speaking of games that I'm excited about, we have The Witcher Path of Destiny by Go On Board. The Witcher Path of Destiny, they went ahead and they announced that their upcoming campaign, they have a first day gift over here, the, um, uh, uh is Geralt on Roach or whatnot, but either way, they have The Witcher Path of Destiny is going to be a... I don't even know how you describe this game. I'm not going to try to describe this game. I mean, know how to describe the game. I don't know how to describe it in a very short amount of words. The Witcher Path of, Path of Destiny is going to be a very different game than The Witcher or The Old World. That actually is a perfect amount of words. It's a very different game than The Witcher or The Old World. There you go. Now you know not nearly enough about the game. But the game is going to have you trying to vie for the Path of Destiny. The path uh, the path that Gerald, uh, Gerald, uh, Gerald, Gerald, I can't say the name, is going to be taking throughout the course of the game. You're going to be trying to determine the destiny. You're going to be taking control of various characters. You're going to be choosing the pathways in various stories while trying to control the cards you play and which side of various things you're feeding into. I'll have coverage on the game. I've already played it. I'll do a better job of explaining it in the future. It would work better with visual aids. But The Witcher Path of Destiny, they announced this over on GameFound. Disclaimer as usual, I work for GameFound. Uh, but they announced this over here, and they announced a multi-year partnership with GameFound over, you know, multi-campaign, multi-whatever. A bunch of stuff coming from Go On Board in case you're interested in that the page over here, I haven't even seen all of this yet, but this is this is The Witcher, The Witcher Path of Destiny from, from uh, Go On Board. Then from there and other upcoming stuff, well, not really upcoming stuff, we have Mythic Mischief, and this is an active campaign, which I don't usually talk about as much in the news and we can review. The only reason I want you to know about this right now is because, and I will talk about this in two back and not to back, don't worry about that, but it's because they have an app right now. Right now, they have an app for Mythic Mischief, an app where you can go ahead and play the game. I don't know if it's actually good. Now that I think about it, I don't know if the app does a good job teaching you the game. I say I don't know because it may have offered me a tutorial, and if it did, I kind of probably ignored it. I think they have like a little, I think they have a thing you can click on that will take you to a YouTube video that will show you how to play the game. But Mythic Mischief, they have an app for the game right now, which is excellent. I wonder when they're going to do an AI. Have they done an AI already? I don't think so. They should do an AI. They should do an AI. Either way, 
Uh, I love Mythic Mischief. I think it's incredible. But it's also expensive. It's not the cheapest game. Uh, IV games in general, their games are not the cheapest games. And so for me to sit there and say, Mythic Mischief's incredible, go ahead and get it, is easy. You know what's easier? Saying Mythic Mischief is incredible, go ahead and try it. And if you like it, then go ahead and get it. That's much easier. And while the factions at some point in the future will cost money, during the course of the Kickstarter campaign, they are currently free to try out. And if, as well as that, if you think if you buy different pledges, you'll be able to get them at a discount, things like that. But Mythic Mischief, the app, hi highly, highly recommend checking it out. I think it's amazing. I think it's incredible. And I think I'm looking at my fingers way too much. Moving on over here, we have Sky Tier Horde Monolith. Last four weeks to complete the Pledge Manager. They basically put out an update saying, hey, you have four weeks to go ahead and back this game in the Pledge Manager. And if you do, great. And if you don't, then you won't have Sky Tier Horde Monolith, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that much more drastic than that. But four weeks left on Sky Tier Horde. I do think this game is fantastic. In fact, I had a lot of people. I recently did a video of my top 10 solo games of all time. As of now, obviously. And I had a few people saying that, um, what did people say? They said things. Words were definitely said. I had a few people uh, comment on Sky Tier Horde asking me how I felt about that one. And that one did make the shortlist. When I was put, when it's coming down to the final 15 or so and making the final cut, Sky Tier Horde was in the shortlist. It did not make the final cut, but it was, it was close. I like Sky Tier Horde a lot, and I do enjoy it more solo. From there, we have Disney Larkana, Rise of the Floodborns announced, as well as new cards revealed, new game abilities, all these things. I believe there's articles you can check out every single card listed in Rise of the Floodborne. I wonder if they're on the app already. You know, they have a fun little app where you can go ahead and see all the cards, and it's a cute app. My, my kids have enjoyed going through it. But either way, more content for Larkana, which would be great, because all the content for Larkana is so readily available that I'm already kind of sick of the game because of how readily available all the content is. I, I was interested in Lakana, like hard interested in Lakana, but the, the lack of, of reasonable availability has kind of like sent me into a place where I feel like I have self-control again. So I don't know if I will or won't be diving into the world of Lakana. All I know is I was ready to, and I'm kind of like, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. Either way, moving on over here, we have not-so-fun news. We have toy manufacturer Haba applies for insolvency. Basically, Haba, which is a larger company than I thought it was, Haba has like 2,000 employees, uh, revenues of 353 million. Unfortunately, those revenues came at the loss of 4 million euros of on a revenues of 353, which I guess ratio-wise isn't the worst, but 4 million euros is still 4 million euros lost. So they've applied for insolvency. Uh, they've already closed certain factions of the company. They have different various factions to Haba. Uh, but yeah, they are unfortunately going through a fairly large restructuring. It seems like they are still in business. I don't know all the steps involved in the insolvency process, but Haba is... Um, I mean, corrective measures are needed, as the article says. And that's what we have for our news and week in review, or at least for the news part of the week in review. We don't have a lot more there. Let's go ahead and put this my laptop's still charging right now it's very very low so i'm gonna put it off over there and let's go ahead and dive into not the topic of the week because i don't really have a topic of the week i did have a topic of the week and i was like you know what i don't actually want to talk about it this week i'll talk about it next week instead assuming i remember what the topic of the week was i may or may not in any case from there we're gonna go ahead and dive into the week in review starting with the games i played as usual this is a smattering of the games i played not every single game i played because that would be a very long video but rather here are three games i played i usually try to pick things that don't necessarily have a review right now presently attached but may in the future or may not or have already things like that i was going to talk about mythic mischief because i've been playing it i've played mythic mischief like 20 times this week alone because of the app i mean before the app i played it like 10 to 15 times in the past two weeks because I've been doing coverage and whatnot. And so that was all played physically. And then I went from 10 to 15 times physically to like 20 plus times in the app. I am not nearly Mythic Mischief out just yet. I'm enjoying the puzzle. I'm enjoying more particularly the ability to try every single faction multiple times as opposed to kind of sticking with my favorites. And so I've definitely developed more. I realized I said I wasn't talking about Mythic Mischief and now I am talking about Mythic Mischief. Whatever, we'll keep going with it. I will say that currently my factions, like faction-wise as far as Mythic Mischief goes, the factions that are rising to the top that I'm really loving and appreciating is, uh, first of all, my favorite to date is the Gnomes. I am currently undefeated on Gnomes. If you want to challenge me over on the app, my username is alexsr32. If I accidentally reject your invite, it's probably, it's either one of two things. It's either it's an accident, because sometimes I, I've done it twice now. I've twice now I've accidentally rejected an invite, and I don't know what happened after that. And then, uh, alternatively, it's because 7,000 of you messaged me, and so, um... I can't keep up that much. But currently, I'm undefeated with gnomes. I will be defeated. By the time we have next week, next week's video, I'll be like, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, fine. Okay, I've been defeated with gnomes. It's okay. I don't always pick gnomes. That's the tricky part. I'm not always going to select gnomes again in a game against you. I pick them infrequently, like 1 11th of the time, as is appropriate because they are 11 factions in the game. But 
I'm currently in the feeder zone. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Werewolves I'm really enjoying, but I've played, I played a mean defensive game, but meaning they were mean to me. Uh, someone who was really well-structured defensively against the Werewolves, it was brutal. They destroyed me, but overall, really liking the Werewolves. I would say it's Gnomes, then Frankenstein's Monsters, then Werewolves are my probably my top three, then Vampires. Witches were up there. I need to double check. I actually, witches still might be up there. I think I haven't actually played witches a lot on the app yet. I think I made it to them once. But the the were, the wa vampires are definitely growing on me. I will say the gargoyles. I hate the wizards. I mean, I'm still gonna keep playing as all of these factions until I get better at them. But the gargoyles, I hate. The wizards are possibly my least favorite after the gargoyles. I, they're swapping movement. I don't find it rewarding enough. Ghosts, I'm still experimenting with. Trolls, I'm still experimenting with. So there's still factions I'm messing around with and still getting better in the mill zone. But that's a quick, short, not so short analysis of Mythic Mischief, the game that I was going to talk about but decided not to because. I just have to talk about it instead. Other games we have are Horror on the Orient Express. That's going to be an upcoming Kickstarter game or Game Found game. I'm not actually sure. But Horror on the Orient Express, uh, designed by... Oh my gosh, this is not good. This war of mine, Adam Kopinski. Uh, the, the Horror on the Orient, Orient Express is, uh, is a game that's coming out. I had a chance to play this. I had a chance to see it at Gen Con. I had a chance to play it this past week. Really enjoyed it with the caveat that I really need to properly play it. I, it's, uh, it's still prototype form. Lots of things aren't yet done on TTS. So I'm not sure where I end up with it, I am really intrigued to dive into it more. Right now, it's the kind of game that I would not be surprised if I was like, this game's amazing, you should play it, and I would not be surprised if, like I said, this game's pretty good, but I don't need to play it again. It could go either way right now, but definitely intrigued. Uh, it's a game about a horror on the Orient Express. You're managing the various sanity levels and, you know, fighting aspects of all the people on the horror on the Orient Express, so, uh, yeah, currently I like it. We'll, we'll see from there. Uh, past that, we have, what else do we have? I'm just realizing something that is a uh, potential problem. We'll figure it out. It's something to do with my computer and the screens, whatever. Either way, side things going on because I was streaming today and relaying some buttons haven't been pushed and now I'm going into a side tangent with that. It's all tangent land. My Island. I played My Island for the, I guess, second time technically. I've played My Island before, but I got to dive into the first three scenarios of My Island. Uh, currently streaming that. I'm going to be streaming that over on the Board Game Co. channel. If you missed that, you can check that out. Uh, I, the Camp Co-op channel I've been doing with Professor Meg where we stream games. We went on a bit of a hiatus from streaming just because of convention season. We're trying to come back right now, but we're testing it out on the Board Game Co. channel. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not entirely sure what will happen. A lot of it's just about easier to manage. Just easier to manage a single channel than having multiple channels. Dealing with comments, dealing with, you know, thumbnails and loading screens, all those things. It's just easier to manage one channel for right now. So we'll see how that goes. But in terms of my island, I'm enjoying my island. I like it so far. Have I seen enough to be like, oh my gosh, this is the best game ever? No. So far, I still like my city more, but I also know how my city iterates and develops. I am intrigued by my island, and we'll see how it continues to develop as we play. And lastly, Sagrada Artisans. I played Sagrada Artisans again, continued playing that more of that. I'm enjoying Sagrada Artisans continuously. I like the, the evolution of, you know, the, just I like the legacy aspect of Sagrada Artisans. I already have a review on the channel. You can check that out. I've just been diving into it even more. And with that, we're going, I mean, I don't have anything specific to say about Sagrada Artisans. Past, I like it. It's still fun. It's still enjoyable to, you know, play Sagrada with like new windows and stuff. Anyways, moving on over here to the weekend review, starting off with this past Saturday. This past Saturday, I did a feud review. Feud is a tough one because I really like the game, but the graphic design and the presentation just doesn't pull me in. Historically, that has been a problem even when I like the game. So, for example, a good example would be uh, Soul to Soul Forge Fusion was a game that I both gave a 4 to 5 and then also got rid of it because I just wasn't inspired to play it. Feud right now is currently on my shelf. It's a prototype, but it's currently, even as a prototype, it's currently on my shelf because it's a good enough prototype. I do like the game. I don't know if it'll stay long term. That does come down to how often it gets played. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 because of that. The mechanics, it's a 4 out of 5. It is a 4 out of 5 mechanically. But graphic design, presentation, those are factors to me, unfortunately. And so that's where we are. Uh, then later on Saturday, we had Rogue Angels, a preview for Rogue Angels from Professor Meg. She went into Rogue Angels, which is a game I've had a chance to play. I've said this already in the channel already, but I've had a chance to play it while they're doing the demo initially. I liked my first play, but a single you know session that was good does not a review make. I want to see more more of it, but I enjoyed it so far. Then on Sunday, Sunday we had a uh, Games Leaving the Collection video for the month of September. Bunch of games leaving, as usual. It kind of happens a lot. We had a few older games, but a lot of the regular chaff going going in and out that's just, you know, games I played, they left because they didn't capture me enough to hold on to. In general, I keep somewhere between 10 to 15% of the games that I, I, I play in a given year, around 10 to 15% of those actually stay temporarily, and then half of those go away within the first year, and the other half actually kind of hold on to for a bit. Most games do not stay, that's just how it works. Then on Monday, we had two back and not to back, where we went over crowdfunding campaigns, a bunch of crowdfunding campaigns. I backed Terraforming Mars. I'm sad that I backed Terraforming Mars because I've been doing so well at not backing things. But it's Terraforming Mars. Like, there are some things I'm willing to pay money for. 
I shouldn't have backed Terraforming Mars. Whatever. Either way, that's Terraforming Mars. Then we're going to have uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, we're going to have a few things. We had a review for Mythic Mischief together with Professor Meg, talking about both Mythic Mischief in general, as well as Mythic Mischief, the new faction, Volume 2, and all of that. Uh, my overall opinion is, I think that Mythic Mischief is amazing, and I think if you love Mythic Mischief, get Volume 2. If you like Mythic Mischief and you play it infrequently, if you already have, like, seven factions, four more is not going to, like, you're going to spend money on those. Like, factor in the cost-benefit of getting more stuff, but if you love it, I mean, it's more fun stuff. I like it. I, I will say, the gnomes are my favorite faction, gargles are my least favorite faction, so take what you will out of that as far as the new factions go. What are the four factions? Fairies, fairies are in the middle for me. Fairies I like, they're in the middle. They're neither high nor low for me. Then later on Tuesday, we had a, a review for Flock Together. Flock Together from... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the company. Um, darn it. Can't remember the name of the company. Either way, like Moon Cow, Moon something? No. Don't remember. Flock Together. I uh, gave the one a 3.5 out of 5. I liked a lot of the things that the game was doing. Uh, the thing I did not love is I felt like a lot of my time was spent collecting food, only to expend it all in an attack and then a heal and all that. So there were a lot of fun things in the game, but also things that held it back for me. So a 3.5 out of 5. And then we had a review for Fromage. Fromage from RTI Games. Uh, again, disclaimer, there was an unpaid review, but they have done paid content, as you saw earlier in this video. And so, uh, but Fromage, I gave a 3.5 out of 5. I liked a lot of the things the game was doing, but uh, across multiple plays, it kind of felt that each each aspect of the board, each of the modules on the board kind of operates on its own. And so I didn't get a sense of cohesive interweavingness, which meant that as I played it more and more, I felt like I'd seen a lot of what the game had to offer. I still enjoy it. I still want to keep playing it, but it's a uh, drop shy of a four for me. Uh, then from there on Wednesday, Wednesday, we had a few things. We had a, a gameplay of Tenerous Adventures. I'm continuing to dive into the world of Tenerous Adventures in two and a half hour blocks of time at a time as I go through it. Still loving it, but also it's just a long game. So I'm curious to see how it holds sustaining interest across the next, you know, I'm doing a gameplay basically every two weeks for the next year until I finish the, the campaign. So I'm I'm into week two so far out of a four week campaign. So uh, I'm curious who's along for the ride, who's enjoying it. But it's Tenaris Adventures, uh, Morge from Dragori Games and all of that. Then later on Wednesday, we had a uh, weekly live. I did the weekly live again solo. I'm left uh, left hanging by Devin, Meg and uh, Jenna, although they keep showing up in chat. Those people keep showing up in chat, even though they are theoretically busy. It is what it is. But a weekly live engage with your questions. I enjoy that as well. I did that for a while before I started doing, you know, what I mean, for a while I did weekly, I did live content like every, I don't know, six months because I just didn't have the bandwidth. And then I went full time and was able to actually do live content, which is great because I like interacting with all of you. And then lastly, on Wednesday, we had a, uh, a preview for Theme Park Mania. This is from Professor Mega. It was a preview of Theme Park Mania, a game of building a theme park. I don't know as much about the game myself, so I can't overly get into it, but a game about theme parks, and she did a preview for that. Then on Thursday, Thursday we had uh, 15 games from, Thursday was 15 games from Essen to, to look into. Basically, I went over the Essen list over on Board Game Geek. I found 15 games that were the most appealing to me, specifically games that I have not played and that I have not covered in my Gen Con list until now. But that uh, that's basically the, the point of it. I went over them, to, uh, covered the 15, I ranked them in order of interest. There are a bunch of games I am very, very interested. I am sadly not going to Essen, but I'm still going to keep my eyes peeled for the various games that come out out of Essen. And then on Friday, Friday we had a few things. We had a preview for Aberration. Aberration is from Ghostfire Gaming. There'll be a gameplay of that as well, so there's going to be a preview on the channel as well as a gameplay. Uh, I, haven't ha I have had a chance to play that one. I very much enjoyed that one. Uh, obviously, it's paid coverage, so take that into account, but I was present for the playthrough. In general, for paid coverage on the, on the channel, very often preview content I'm either less associated with or not associated with it at all. Uh, Meg handles all that. For the gameplays, I'm usually in them. As far as my commentary on them, I will usually still comment on them. I will not comment on them in the videos, but I'll usually give some thoughts about them. In general, if a game is so bad that I, I like, I'm, eh, I would probably reject it and turn away the money. So I have, I have done that actually. I, have, I know for, I've already in this preview slash gameplay loop, I have unfortunately reached out to people and said, hey, I, I just, I don't think this game is a game I want to show to my audience. That has happened already. It is not necessarily about the game being bad. It's about I don't think the game is the right fit. For, for you. And so that does happen. But most of the time, the game will be good to great. And so I'll generally comment to some extent. You're not going to get a full review, but I just have a hard time playing something and not giving my opinion. I have a hard time in the video on its own, sure, but in the greater ecosystem, it's 
I don't feel like walking around for the next like two years being like, I'm not saying what my opinion is in the game. And I understand channels I do. That's not in any way meant to be critical. I just like having opinions, so it is what it is. Anyways, I enjoyed Aberration. How much do I enjoy it? I don't know. I'd have to play it more. I've only gotten a play and a half under my belt, a half play to test it out, and then a play to, to go ahead and do the gameplay. Uh, and then, then I was on Friday. More things on Friday. We also had a review for Hookie. Hookie's a game that I reviewed a bit ago. Just been in the slow slog of reviews coming out. You can check that out. I gave that one, I believe, it's actually, a, I filmed it a while ago, so I believe I gave it a 3 out of 5. It might have been a 3.5 out of 5. I have to check that one. And then later on, lastly on Friday, we have a review for Orion Duel. Orion Duel from Madigo Games. This was a game that was not on my radar until Gen Con came along, and now it's on my radar, and I really like it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It's an abstract strategy game with three ways to win, or two ways to win and one way to lose. I think it's very clever. I very much enjoy it, and um, I recommend it. I recommend checking it out if you are in any way interested. And then from there, that brings us to today. Today we'll have two things going up. We're going to have a review for Sirens going up, an upcoming Kickstarter campaign. I have to double check that. I have to double check if the review for Sirens is going up. I may I may proxy in something else instead of Sirens, because I just realized I don't know when that campaign is going up. I need to time that. Okay, we'll come back to that. But the other thing you can expect to see is a Terraforming Mars The Dice Game review. Uh, so that will be going over to the channel later today. Check that out as well. Next week, next week we'll have a few things going up. We're going to have uh, we're gonna have review content or possibly first impressions content. We'll see how we call it. Depends on some things. But we're going to have a review slash first impressions for Dragon Eclipse, for uh, Beast, uh, Beast Shattered Isles, as well as we're going to have a month in review for August going up on Sunday. So if you like the new month in review series, the third one is going up, well, Sunday, so you can check that out as well. Is it only the third or is it the second? It's the third one. Are we up to the third one already? Time flies. Wow. Wow. Anyways, that's basically what we have there, and that brings us to the games on the table. Games on the table, as usual, these are a smattering of the games I hope to be playing this week. I hope to be diving into Apiary, which from Stormire Games, I have to, I started the rules, but only started the rules. I want to dive into that. I want to play Art Society from Mighty Boards, as well as Honey Buzz. We're diving into Honey Buzz again from uh, Elf Creek slash Goliath Games, and then Barrage from Cranio Creations. Technically, this one I started. I finally started a game over on Board Game Arena, so I'm counting that, though, because I've been trying to play this for a long time, and with the active Kickstarter campaign for Barrage, I want to know if I should be backing that two-player board, so I want to get a sense of how much do I appreciate or understand or grok the gameplay of it. Currently, we're three turns in. I'm definitely losing. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.